The entertainment industry is known for promising fame and fortune, but it also hides a tricky web of relationships that can make or break your career. While cast members can feel like a second family, things can quickly take a turn for the worse. Beneath the surface, tensions often simmer and power struggles come into play. A director or producer with a fragile ego, unable to accept an actor's input, can easily trigger a downfall. Such was the fate of John Amos, who was a talented soul. And in today's video, we will witness his heartbreaking tragedy, which is beyond heartbreaking. I mean, my wife is down at the phone booth making a call, and uh, she'll be back any minute. Oh. And we both broke up. I mean, we were both screaming because we knew intuitively how funny it was going to look. And sure enough, when they ran it back, the crew was in tears. They couldn't, because it was just like a cartoon. It was like special effects. It snatched them back into the room. So we got a good laugh out of that. Tip. Yeah, well, if that's him, I'm gonna uninvite him. No. You ain't welcome here! No. <laughs> Everyone is born with a golden spoon in their mouth. Some people are just given birth with a struggling fate on their plates. One of those stressed people was John Amos, a man whose life was cooked in the fire of hardships, who was born in 1939 in East Orange, New Jersey. His early life was marked by suffering as his father was a mechanic in the U.S., but he humbly brought up his son. However, John's spirit was unbreakable. He passionately pursued his education, attending local schools, college, and university, and even began a career as a social worker. Yet, life had other plans. He discovered his readily athletic abilities, becoming a college football player and a Golden Glove boxing champion. The struggles that are still imprinted on his face only show his determination. Finally, he made a decision that would change his future forever. It was a bold, wild decision that would transform the young boy into a legend. The question is, what was that critical moment and how did it shape the destiny of John Amos? The late 1960s brought a massive turn in John Amos's life. He took his first steps onto the stage, marking the first day of a journey filled with triumph, overwhelming experiences, regrets, and heartache. His 1971 debut in a comedy show, Norman, Is That You?, gave him a Los Angeles Drama Critics nomination for Best Actor as proof of his talent and dedication. But this spotlight was always painful, and lows often overshadow his highs. With his continuous success in the entertainment industry, Amos created his own theater company, pouring his heart and soul into it. Furthermore, he was guest-starred in several TV shows and was also a relentless reminder that stability in TV shows was a luxury he couldn't afford. From Police Story to Murder, she wrote, he played his roles passionately but the struggles behind the scenes remained. He also appeared in films like The World's Greatest Athlete and Let's Do It Again, with a smile hiding the pain of a life lived in the shadows of dark fame. And yet, he managed to persevere a seat as a spokesman for the Cochrane firm with an inspiring voice of hope in a world that often gave him many regrets. Fast forward to 1975, when John Amos, the talented actor who brought the character of James Evans Sr. to life, shone brightly in the groundbreaking sitcom series, Good Times. For two precious years, he acted as a loving father of James Evans Jr., creating memories that still stayed. The show portrayed a typical middle-class black family struggling in a poor neighborhood. However, like a fleeting whisper and rumor that took over the audience, Amos vanished from the show just after 61 episodes. The aims behind his sudden departure from the show remained a mystery until the show's makers decided to reveal the story behind the curtains. However, it still left a horrible sense of what could have happened and the real reasons that caused this tragedy. Well, 
John Amos went on with promising acting in this three-time aired sitcom, Good Times. This show promised to break barriers and shatter all the stereotypes that state that every show in America will dominate white actors over black ones. Through this series, John envisioned a platform where authentic African-American household stories could be told with realism, pride, and humor. Although everything started with great success, storytelling, and narration, with every next episode, the true idea of the series was watered down somewhere between the lines, with no African tale being truly displayed for the audience. Amos watched everything, dismayed as the Fitzworthy laughter was reduced to cheap, hollow giggles and shallow storylines. He felt that the writers didn't understand the African-American experiences and storylines, and they continued to maintain useless and made-up tropes, which he could not resist any longer. He went on to discuss the sheer problem with the director. Without any consideration, they ignore John's pleas for more genuine and realistic portrayals. Hence, he ended up clashing with the show's creator, Norman Lear and the other higher-ups who couldn't believe that an actor was pointing out their mistakes and telling them what to do and what not to do. He further raised his voice in protest against the show's direction. Sadly, all his concerns fell on deaf ears, and the tension between him and the production team grew thicker than the Chicago fog. It all resulted in a shocking final blow that came in 1976, when his character, James Evans Sr. was abruptly killed off-screen as a victim of a car accident that occurred far from the eyes of the audience. Everyone was shocked at the character's sudden demise and readily started feeling the emptiness in the show. The pain of that experience, which was no less than a tragedy for the actor, still lingered years later when he finally decided to open up the other side of the controversy. John emotionally reflected on the show, which had gifted him with many memories, laughs, awards, and, most importantly, love from the spectators. They didn't get it, he said in a voice heavy with bottled-up feelings and emotions. They didn't understand our struggles, our triumphs, our way of life. They reduced us to caricatures, and I couldn't be a part of it anymore. But the question still lingers. What could have happened if Good Times had stayed loyal to its original vision and been given a voice for the stories that desperately needed to be shared with the audience? Apart from this, we also witnessed that John was deeply moved by the offstage relationship with his real son, Jamie Walker. Everyone in the cast was like a family. Hence, he had always tried to connect deeply with them. Still, sadly, this actor from the TV show continued to break his heart with his rigid behavior. Although Jamie Walker was eight years younger than Amos, he still lacked the traits of respect and love with his older co-stars. Being offered a huge series, he started to feel arrogant, and at some places, he also mentioned that John would have truly found it difficult to work with me because of my God-gifted humor and comical sense. Well. Saying such things to a senior actor will always create a mess. And the same thing happened on the set, as both John Amos and Jamie Walker ended up in a quarrel. John never wanted it to be this way, but Walker had planned something else for him. Well, how will you feel if a person way smaller than you in age bashes you out in such a way and uses abusive words for you? Utterly heartbreaking. Moreover, this thing didn't end up here, as Jamie's didn't even have other co-stars' phone numbers. Once, when he was asked to sit with the different actors in a show where they would celebrate Good Times actors' reunions, he immediately turned his face and told them to call off this mess because he couldn't sit with them in one room. His words were no less than a toxic attack on John and other co-actors who shared beautiful memories. Well, for once in his lifetime, Amos would have considered Walkie's rash behavior a personal attack on him and the other team members 
and labeled it as a controversial tragedy, where actors from the same nations fought not for each other, but with each other. The fight didn't end there, as Amos claimed that Walker had tried to destroy his character many times. They never looked at each other as friends, but felt a grave rivalry. John agreed that at least Jammy considered him a good actor, and he never expected more from him. Both of them thought that if more love existed between the two actors, the series would have proceeded for a longer time, and its rating would have been much better. Furthermore, another tragedy between the two rivals spread like fire in a jungle. The incident occurred when Jamie's put forward his opinion on why the team should create a poster of Bernadette. Well, she was more beautiful and confident than him and would capture more of an audience for the show. John felt it was a personal attack on the actress who was there to act and not sell her beauty. Due to this, an intense environment was created as Amos readily disagreed and snubbed his on-screen son about having such disgraceful opinions about a female actress. His words at that time were quite strong and threatening as he said, how dare you put our girl in a position like that? She's not a hoe. It wasn't about that, but the backlash was so fierce I never brought it up again. Even today, when anyone encounters John, he surly inquires about this distressing tragedy in which one co-actor almost forgets to pay respect to his female star, opening all the wounds from the past. Life didn't stop here for John Amos as he went on to explore more opportunities to bloom his career. After leaving the all-time famous show, Good Times, John Amos believed he would find a new path to success with the groundbreaking miniseries Roots. But despite his Emmy nomination, he struggled to find roles that truly resonated or became popular among the audience, just like James Evans Sr. He continuously took on parts in TV films and sitcoms, but they were sadly canceled or forgotten. The memories of his iconic character, James Evans Sr., haunted him as a constant reminder of what could have happened if he had resisted at that time. However, he also appeared in TV shows like Hunter and The District, but the spark was gone. He struggled to revive his passion with a country music album. Still, it felt like an unfriendly echo of his former glory. Even as he accepted awards and tributes, including multiple TV Land Awards and a New Jersey Hall of Fame induction, disappointment stayed. Now, as we look back on his career, we can't help but wonder, what if John Amos had found more success, more happiness, and more fulfillment in his work? Apart from his acting life, his personal life was also no less than a grave tragedy. As all the things he would have never dreamt of happened, putting a mark on his whole personality that luck will never be a companion to you. In his personal life, John Amos has experienced the ups and downs of love and family. His first marriage to Noel Mickelson, a talented artist and equestrian, lasted from 1965 to 1975, bringing two incredible children into his life. Though the marriage ended, his love and pride for his children remain firm. He later found love again with actress Lillian Lehman, and together they lived life's joys and challenges. However, John still fears losing his second wife and children because he knows his bad destiny. The tragedies that took over John Amos shaped him into a firm person who could stand up for his rights whenever needed. However, from all the incidents in his life, we can sum up that when life turns its back on you, you can never be able to restore the luck you deserve. With this, let's end the video, but do remember to comment below about your worst life tragedies. Also, hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more such spicy gossip and see you in the next video.